Let's get ready for another fight between the boys in blue and green and white. And they sang along to the same old songs, saying one is right, the other is wrong. They want nothing more than the winning score tonight. They will scream and shout and they will drink on through the night Oh Glasgow Whistles all around through the streets up in the town, past the ballroom and the boats and the river Clyde as she floats, and the girls and boys they're all out in force tonight. They will chance their arm for a shot of love at first sight. Oh, Glasgow. She don't make no fuss about the places I have been And she don't make no fuss about what I've seen Oh glad Okay, my name's Finlay Napier. Uh, I'm a singer-songwriter. I've lived in Glasgow for 21 years. I moved down here to study traditional Scottish folk music at the RCS. Um, I've been writing songs since I was 15 or 16. Um, and I kind of took a break from writing songs. I got into co-writing uh, in my sort of mid to late 20s and that kind of changed my whole outlook of writing. Um, so... When I left the RCS, I had a band called Back of the Moon and we toured a lot abroad, a folk band. Uh, and when Back of the Moon finished, I started taking my songwriting way more seriously. Um, so I did two albums called Queen Anne's Revenge, under the name Queen Anne's Revenge. And then um, I got funding from Creative Scotland uh, called Mid-Level Career Funding, which I don't know if they still do, maybe they do. Um, and it completely changed my life. I went and wrote with a guy called Boo Hewardine and um, he kind of mentored me. Um, and we produced this album, which is called VIP. And that was kind of the, the 
that was kind of the thing that we did together. Um, and that that album changed my life and kind of changed the trajectory of my career, which at that point, to well be honest with you, was kind of flatlining. Uh, and Boo really helped. He helped with my writing, and he, but he also just helped with like a lot of common sense stuff. Um, so to mark 20 years of, for 20 years of being in Glasgow clothes, now it's 21, I brought out this album here, which is called Glasgow. Well, that's what I was singing today, um, all songs from that. And it's quite a nice thing because it's not all my own songs. There's a couple I co-wrote with Boo. Um, so the one Wire Burners, I co-wrote with him. Uh, and then there's songs that are covers, which is something I actually haven't really done ever. Um, so a couple of the songs I sang today are covers. Uh, March Town is by Emma Pollock, um, which it never made it onto her last album. Um, and it's a brilliant song. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that it didn't fit with what they were doing. So I, I, so I kind of got that song and I've, that's, that's it recorded now. Uh, and Glasgow that I sang as well is by Julia Dugan. And I recorded other things like Cod Liver Oil and the Orange Juice and stuff. But at the moment, that's my kind of main thing. Except I have this other thing. Look at me with all my pile of merch. <laughs> this is Shake the Chains. This is a really interesting project. I was so lucky to get to be asked to be involved with it. It's something I always saw other musicians doing. And I was always like, oh, I'd love to be involved in like a, a project. Uh, thing and it was a, a, a project about sort of protest and political songs and um, we went to Herefordshire to a barn for three days five musicians I'd actually not really met any of them before certainly not hung out with them that much and uh, we sort of came up with a, a, a came up with a concert set we wrote some new songs for it and stuff and building ships that I did appears on that um, that was one of the ones that we did and we did a tour five date tour of the UK and we're doing another tour uh, in February um, another five dates but every gig that we do we get like a a, um, a kind of famous political singer to join us so I did a gig with uh, Martin Simpson I did a gig with uh, um, who else or who else was on it Boff Wally from Chumbawamba um, I think he's coming out with us again actually um, and Peggy Seeger as well which was pretty cool um, and someone said to me just remember that when you're doing this gig, that's Peggy Seeger. You know that song, The First Time Ever I Saw Your Face? She is the face from The First Time Ever I Saw Your Face. That's about her. It was written for her. So it's kind of like, <laughs> it was mad to do a gig there, kept looking over it. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of what I'm about. I do a bit of teaching. I do run songwriting retreats. I run Glasgow Songwriting Festival. So I kind of do a bit of music teaching and a bit of music playing. So that's me. <laughs> There's more to building ships than smashing champagne off the stern Than royals and the crowds and the blaring of the horn There's someone counting pennies and there's someone needs new shoes And someone's up the pawn shop buying back their weekend suit There's more to building ships than nostalgia, ache and pride Of watching hulks roll down the docks and turn into the Clyde There's four men in the hospital, ten men in the ground And everyone among them breathe that dust into their lungs Everyone among them breathe that dust into their lungs Building ships and shaping steel into a hull. There's labourers and managers flying flags and fighting wars. From the draftsman in the office to the man who welds the plate. And everyone among them should get fair and equal pay. And everyone among them should get fair and equal pay. It's more than building ships, it's that every working day They stand there on the dock sides and they watch them sail away But someone in the government 
wants to make their name They scupper it and cut it And the union takes the blame They scupper it and cut it And the union takes the blame And they watch them sail away Making a cup of tea I've done this before, you can probably tell. Um, I could pour that. Right. I used to work quite a lot with a guy called Chris Sherburn, who is, uh, who's from a place called Ghoul. And we had a, I was in his band, which is called Last Night's Fun, for a while. And then we went out as a duo. And Chris Sherburn, when you make him a cup of tea, it sh the, the tip of the spoon should begin melting. That's the point at which you take the tea bag out, you know. Like, and I've seen him make cups of tea where he's put two tea bags in. So I like a strong cup of tea like this. Not quite a Chris Sherburn, but not far off. Let's see, how's this? That looks all right. Um, no sugar. Um, I was never into sugar in tea. I'd mostly drink coffee, I'll be honest. Uh, but if I'd have a cup of tea, sometimes I'll have it black. Uh, but today I'm just going to have, because it's blue milk, very important the blue milk. It's actually it's actually better for you because it's not got all the crap that they put in semi-skimmed there. So that's quite a dark cup of tea that um I don't know how to describe the colour, but it's actually the same colour pretty much as the tea bag. There we go. Cheers. Ah my mouth ah! <laughs> It's a regular nine to five It's the way that we survive Only way to keep alive Wire burners You might see us on the street But our eyes will never meet You will never see us greet Wire burners how I came to be this way I couldn't tell All I can say Tomorrow will be like today And every day Follow the rainbow over the Clyde To the fireplace on the other side In plain sight is where we hide Wire burners I couldn't tell All I can say Tomorrow will be like today And every day Pushing trolleys through the town With the scrap that we have found Daylight ghosts that walk around Wire burners and I know this much is true for wire burners Old is new, but for the grace of God go you How oh, I came to be this way I couldn't tell All I can say Tomorrow will be like today And every day And every day
The last picture I took on my phone was actually a wee video for Instagram and it is of my four-year-old daughter jumping up and down in a puddle in the rain yesterday. <laughs> the first celebrity I remember fancying. God, that's quite a hard one. It might give away too much. Pro... Oh, it'd probably be like Cameron Diaz or maybe Patricia Arquette, probably. Aye. One of them two. <laughs> Cats or dogs? Probably dogs. You need to know why. Um, because I don't think you really own a cat. I think you can own a dog and dogs can love you. Cats simply tolerate you and they own you. Um, I still would like a cat, but I think dog. <laughs> no! Most embarrassing memory. Oh God, there's so many. Oh, there's a, there's a really bad one, which where drink was involved, where I arrived at someone's house to stay for a week and I arrived already pretty pickled, drank more at the house and in the middle of the night staggered through to their bathroom, was violently ill in what I thought was their toilet. Um, and I woke up in the morning just to the sound of them cursing and swearing. I'd been sick in their linen basket in their toilet. All like, just I'd redecorated their bathroom in red wine and Guinness. And that was awful. But what is more awful, way more awful, is the fact that because I had arrived drunk, I couldn't remember their name. It was just like the worst. And just wake, oh, so bad so bad the worst and it and it, it just kind of went on because i remember as well like i walked out and i was like oh my god i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i'll buy you some bleach <laughs> <laughs> like that's gonna help oh such a tool anyway um so let that be a lesson to you <laughs> my perfect dinner simple curry i'll i'm an absolute curry fanatic um I use Mother India Cafe as like the bar at which I all, which I judge every curry by, but I am I'm really lucky in that I live in the south side um in a quite a kind of Asian area, so I can get I can get really good curry really easily. And I like the kind of home style stuff that a lot of the places around me sell. So I would say samosas and pakora to start. I there's a really nice chicken mince curry with potatoes it's like i call it um pakistani mince and tatties because i think it's a traditional pakistan i don't think it's an indian thing i think it's specifically a pakistan um uh, home style thing um and then i'd probably have that with bread i would have ice cream for pudding maybe a crumble with that um i quite like that i'd like a bread and butter pudding and ice cream as well so i'd probably yeah maybe bread and butter pudding and ice cream um and I like a beer, but probably it would have to be a nice red wine with that. A nice, a really nice bottle of red wine. French. Yeah. Maybe both. You could maybe have like a wee beer with a starter, bottle of red wine with the, with the main. No, red wine the whole way. I'm quite specific. I like my food. <laughs> From past and present, my top five dinner guests. Um... Okay, they can be anyone, anyone at all. Like, it doesn't have to be someone. Like, this is like a fantasy thing. So it could be anyone. All right. Um, I'm going to say Mark Madden, because I'm a big fan of the WTF podcast. Uh, Tom Waits, who died, he's always going to be a good crack. Um, oh, um, is it Jenny Lewis? I'd, I'd really like to meet her. I think she would be good fun. She writes really funny songs. Um, I think she should come along. Because we're probably going to rant about songwriting at some point. 
and I'm really into comedy and songwriting at the moment. That's by well, <laughs> I'm into songwriting, of course. Uh, oh, Bridget Christie. I've been watching her special quite a lot recently. I think she'd be a good laugh. And Stuart Lee. <laughs> That's five. Three songs on a desert island. Now, this one I should have prepared for. Um, what would be even better is if you could choose the songs that definitely weren't playing. <laughs> Which songs could you avoid at all costs? Um, the three songs that I would take to a desert island. Right. Um, Visions of Joanna, Bob Dylan. I could listen to that over and over and over again. Absolutely love it. Um, that Joni Mitchell song, that was the person I was thinking of. Of I don't can't remember. Did I say her in my five? No. I think she would be really good fun. Uh, anyway, uh, there's, there's a Joni Mitchell song. Um, it would be a toss-up between Amelia, which I really, really love, or uh, Case of You. You know, there's the the there's that version of it with with the strings when she's older. Probably that. Well, uh, no, Amelia. I think I'd take Amelia. And then it's got to be a Loudon Wainwright song, um, or a Michael Mara, uh, or or Andy Newman. You know, like those those guys have got songs that you could just listen to over and over and over again. So now I've got now I've cornered myself. Um, Actually, Schenectady Calling, Peary Willie Johnson by Michael Mara. I could listen to that all day, forever. I love it. One day I might actually learn how to play it. <laughs> My three wishes would be, I would like uh, financial security, because um, I have a wee girl, and it would be nice to not have to worry about, you know, stuff like my house and my car and you know what I mean that would be I think financial security would be a great thing um the ability to travel through time so that I could go and meet lots of amazing people maybe before they knew they were going to be famous I just meet them but then also within built into that which is the fact that they would automatically forget that I had so I didn't screw up the timeline timeline I think that'd be a really good one um so I've got financial security and I'm traveling through time and meeting lots of famous people. Do you know what? I'd really like to be able to write like some of these journalists can write. You know, like they, they put out, the, you know, these music books, you probably buy these music books. I'd love to be able to, 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 to write that kind of stuff, you know, so you're like interviewing somebody and then, then writing their story. Like, I'd obviously like to be, wish that I could be better at writing songs, but I actually feel like... <laughs> I actually feel like you can get better at writing songs without a wish by just actually fucking getting better at like learning and getting better at it. Whereas I, I really like, I can't be arsed, can't be arsed learning how to write like that. So I think like the ability to be able to just like write well, you know, um, I think that would be, that would be a really good wish. Uh, my favourite film is probably The Wizard of Oz because it's, I think it's the first film I ever saw and I've watched it sort of every once in a while over the years. Um, and there's so many great bits about it, like the fact that it's got that black and white bit at the start and it goes to the colour. Um, and there's just, yeah, there's quite a lot to it. And also the fact that it's beautifully referenced in lots of other films. Um, it pops up all over the place. Um, there's there's a is, there's a really good film. Is it a David Lynch film where it's got a, a, an amazing reference to... Is it David Lynch and the woman paints her whole face? She becomes like the Wicked Witch of the, the West. Um, it's got Nicolas Cage in it. <laughs> in fact, has it got Patricia Arquette in it as well? There she is again. Um, no, but The Wizard of Oz is great. Um, and I, I, my auntie tells this brilliant story of, of being round at our house at Christmas and I was three or four and they never ever had done this, but they put me in front of the TV and they went through to the other room for a minute, but they weren't there for a minute. They were there for the duration. And they, she came back through and found me sitting on in the chair, like with tears squirting out my eyes, going, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. 
<laughs> so I obviously had watched the whole. I mean, I don't know if you've seen it recently, but man, you do not play something like that to a three or four year old without being in the same room as them. And like, they, I think they they learned they learned a lesson that day. But maybe that's why my brain is so weird because I did watch that when I was so young. Yeah, cool film. Apart from a musician, my dream job, I think. Um, either some kind of music journalist or some kind of 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 radio interviewer thing I'd love to do. Like I'm I'm really obsessed with Mark Maron's podcast and there's a few other podcasts I listen to all the time and I love that interview. I love that kind of I love that listening to people tell their stories. So I think yeah, some kind of some kind of journalist slash broadcaster would I think probably would be my dream job after this. Let's walk down to Marchtown Before it became home To the soil not yet built on And the factory gates And the lands of Westfield While they sit and they wait For the breaking of new ground no squalor in March town, where the sinners repented. To the station dismantled, through the gate we reclaimed. To the bushes and trees on which we carved our names, with all limbs entangled. She lost the fight despite her cross and palms of silver And neither sister nor the bell and fish could save her In defence of adulterous queens It's goodbye to March town What have they done, March Town? They've crowded and cut you up, pushing in the people till the sirens ring, hands over their ears, cause the walls are too thin, and change makes a strange sound. She lost the fight in spite of cross and palms of silver And neither sister nor the bell and fish would save her In defence of adulterous queens It's goodbye to March Town I'm seeing signs and I'm losing my mind Stuck in March down, it's fine Just not every day All this green, what a wonderful scene But why is it I only see red today Got to get away In this pocket of plenty I'm rescued from Roman And I have surely lost count Of the places I've known But this one I count on Cause this one is home No more running on air She lost the fight in spite of cross and palms of silver And neither sister nor the bell and fish would save her In defence of adulterous queens It's goodbye to March Town It's goodbye to March Town